Hey guys, we're doing a real-time video. My friend uh, Gene Janisi just sent me a video to watch. I want you to hear this real quick. Go ahead, Jordan, play it. Here's the deal. What they're using is high-dose uh, hydrochloroquine and zinc, and they're using between 100 and 250 milligrams a day of zinc. That's a lot. You cannot take that much zinc for a long period of time. But if you are preventatively taking zinc, um, and, and once some Schweppes in your body for quinine, have about three to four ounces a day of that Schweppes tonic water. Take it before you go to bed or first thing in the morning and take at least 50 to 100 milligrams of zinc. Let's say that again, 50 to 100 milligrams of zinc, okay? Do that every day as a preventative. Now listen, I need you guys to share this. Share, share, share. I'm gonna share some stuff. With you. All right, we'll pause it there. So um, I said I would find out for you guys whether or not this is for real. So Jordan's going to ex explain the chemistry right now. Um, just explain what we have up there, Jordan. Yeah, so this is quinine, which is in the tonic water, which is what he's talking about from Schweppes. This is the base for chloroquine, both hydroxy and uh, regular chloroquine. Uh, this is quinoline. Uh, the reason why that he's saying that these have the same properties is this part of the molecule here and here is both a quinoline molecule. That's how these molecules are acting to increase the pH inside the cell to act as antivirals, act as antimalarials. The quinoline base, this nitrogen on the quinoline is basic and that's how it's, how it's doing its job. So they both have that similar structure. Any changes between quinine and chloroquine, I just broke these other groups out as R, which just means that it's other stuff that doesn't really have much of an impact on its concentration of zinc. It's just to alter its other properties, like it's ability to dissolve in uh, fats and stuff like that. But this part of the molecule here is what's really doing the work. That's why they have similar properties. So you agree that that um, what he's saying here is holding water and makes sense? Yeah, that this, the quinine is a naturally occurring compound. We actually developed chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine after realizing that quinine acts as an antimalarial. We wanted to make uh, quinine have more, uh, a more uh, favorable uh, pharmacodynamics. So we wanted it to stay in the body longer. We wanted to have to give doses left off less often. We wanted to have to give smaller doses and changing the structure of the quinine into the chloroquine uh, did all those things, but they still do act the same way fundamentally. So you heard him mention um, that, and we've talked about it before, that you don't want to take too high doses of zinc. I actually put out a video the other day saying 100 milligrams of zinc is too much. And you heard him say taking that much zinc in the long term is too much. But if you're taking it as preventative, um, I would tell you, if I were you, I would take foods that are high in copper. Shiitake mushrooms are very high in copper. We talked about how zinc antagonizes copper, so that can help mitigate some of the problems there. Any other recommendations um, about that? I mean, I honestly, like probably supplementing with copper if you're gonna be taking 100 milligrams is important. I don't think you're gonna be able to eat enough copper in your diet to really compensate for that. So maybe adding a couple, like a milligram or two of, of copper in. I think it's a 10 to one ratio. Um, yeah. I believe that, that we need zinc to copper. So again, uh, it, that's something for you guys to investigate. So uh, we really just wanted to cover whether or not, because apparently this video is going viral. So we wanted to respond to it. And uh, I, I had Jordan come in to specifically respond to it. So thank you so much, Jordan. You're welcome. All right, guys, have a great rest of the day.